What to expect from Simeon Woods Richardson is in his MLB debut Sunday, plus Joe Ryan closes out. It was a very solid rookie season. We'll look at some numbers below the surface from Ryan and look toward the future for him after, again, a solid rookie year where he set the Twins record for most strikeouts by a rookie. It's all coming up on today's episode of Locked On Twins. You are Locked On Twins. Your daily Minnesota Twins podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. And welcome to the Lockdown Minnesota Twins podcast. Today is Friday, September 30th, and I'm your gracious host, Nash Walker. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. It's officially football season. You're going to want to head over and play at betonline.net. They have you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online is where the game starts. Again, this is Nash Walker. Been hosting this podcast on a daily basis for three seasons. Been writing about the Twins at twinsdaily.com for four seasons and I'm coming to you after a twins winner Joe Ryan six scoreless innings tonight eight strikeouts twins beat the Tigers and we also heard today that we're going to be getting another debut Sunday Simeon Woods Richardson and I might be more excited about this debut than any this year and I'm going to tell you why today let's start with Joe who closed out his season today the season is over for him he finished with 147 innings he had a 355 ERA 151 strikeouts, set the rookie record in Twins history for most strikeouts and by a starting pitcher, and uh, was solid this year. You look at his numbers against the American League Central. Joe Ryan was 10-0 and against the American League Central with a 139 ERA. 10-0 and with a 139 ERA against divisional foes. He dominated the Royals and Tigers. And you can look at this a couple of ways. You can look at this and say, well, it's great he's pitching well within within the division. That's going to matter. That's going to matter in the future to pitch well within the division, pitch well at home, things he's done. And then you could look at it and say, hmm, Joe Ryan really beats up on bad teams, doesn't he? And if his overall ERA is 355 and he has a sub-2 ERA against the Central, that means when he's outside of his own division, he got beat around a little bit, and he did. There's room for upside with Joe Ryan. I've, I've made that clear, but I've also made it clear that I don't view him as more than a mid-rotation starter. And sometimes mid-rotation starters have dominant outings. And I think sometimes it's hard because Joe looks excellent sometimes. Like, he has stretches where he looks like a number one, where he is so dominant. It's usually against the Royals and Tigers. It's come against other teams, too. He's very good against Cleveland this year. 19 and two-thirds, four earned runs against Cleveland this year. In 74 batters face, he struck out 17. And that's a Cleveland team that doesn't strike out very much. He has periods where he looks excellent. He's not your prototypical, like, innings-eating mid-rotation starter. He's a rookie, and he's going to go through some lumps, and he did this year. And, again, I think there's upside with Joe Ryan to be more, but I don't know if it's more than a true number three. Right now, I would say he's a 3-4. I think he has upside to be a true number three. Dominated within the division, had a very solid season, was one of the steadiest starters for the Twins. It's also worth mentioning he was great before he got COVID, after he got COVID, not so much. And recently, we've seen him get going again. So maybe that impacted his season. He missed a month of time with COVID. So that could have changed things. And, you know, he got beat around in San Diego. He was he was poor after he came off the injured list for quite some time. That could be That could be a factor in this. That's absolutely, you know, possible that the COVID was a factor. Because his numbers before he went on the injured list – through May 21st, he had a 2.28 ERA, FIP at 3.25 in eight starts. He he was a front runner for rookie of the year at that point through May 21st. Then he got COVID, and right out of the shoot, after getting COVID, his next eight starts, he had a 5.31 ERA with 5.62 fielding independent pitching. It got better, you know that since that San Diego start, and this does not include tonight. He had a 3.58 ERA and 55 and a third. That's lower because he had six scoreless innings. Tonight, opponent batting average 198. Again, that'll be lower because of tonight, and that's since August 1st. So he had eight starts in there that weren't very good, and actually one of those starts was just horrific, and that was in San Diego. I was there. I was at the game when he gave up five home runs, and he gave up 10 earned runs in that game. I was there. If you remove that start, it's an even better season, but I 
I hate when people say that. If you take away that one start, there's a reason he gave up five home runs in that game. There's a reason he gave up five home runs. It's because it's his biggest flaw is giving up home runs, and it really shined that night. That happens. His biggest you know, strength is swings and misses in the upper part of the zone, and some nights he's dominant, and he strikes out 10. Sometimes he'll strike out you know, 8 to 10 in five straight starts where he's just dominant. That's his strength shining. Goes both ways. I like Joe. I think this was a, a great trade for the Twins. And even knowing, I'm saying this knowing and thinking that he's not a frontline starter. This was still a great trade for the Twins. Nelson Cruz for Joe Ryan. And the Nelson Cruz 10-year, it lives through Joe Ryan. And it always should. I'll always say that. It should live through Joe Ryan. Nelly was amazing for this team as a leader in the box, in the clubhouse, in the dugout. He was amazing for this team for two and a half years. And he turned into Joe Ryan via trade. And now Joe Ryan has been really solid in his rookie season and, you know, is a staple in this rotation moving forward. So Nelly will live forever. You know, he'll live at least for the next, (laughs) he'll live forever in my mind as a twin, because that was a really special tenure as a twin. I wish they could have done more for him. He's the only one who showed up in the playoff series in 2020. He hit a home run in 2019 in the playoffs. He showed up and guys around him didn't in the postseason. So I I wish more could have happened there with Nelly but I'll always think of him when I see Joe Ryan dominating like he did tonight and like he did quite a few times this year. Really good season for Joe Ryan. What to expect from Simeon Woods Richardson, another young starter making a debut on Sunday, his major league debut. What to expect from SWR, who the Twins got, of course, in the Jose Barrios trade a little over a year ago. After this word from Bet Online, it's football season. BetOnline.net is your number one source for football betting info this season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. And as always, BetOnline remains your continued source for all your sport wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including Major League Baseball, the MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to BetOnline.net or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online is where the game starts. Again, betonline.net is your number one source for football betting info this season. Head over to betonline.net. It is where the game starts. Simeon Woods Richardson making his MLB debut on Sunday against the Tigers in Detroit. Awesome. Awesome. I made this case a week and a half, two weeks ago, that he should be in the rotation to finish out the season, and he's going to make at least one start in the bigs. One start in the bigs, period, uh, making his major league debut. He he earned this, man. We talk about him a lot because he's had such a great season. And if Louis Varlin, I don't know who's going to win minor league pitcher of the year. I think it, it should be Woods Richardson. Like Joe Ryan, he missed a month plus with COVID. So that like impacted his season negatively. Certainly, he missed time with COVID. We'll see who wins minor league pitcher of the year. It could be Woods Richardson. It could be David Festa. It could be Louis Varlin again. Uh, Louis Varlin won Twins Minor League Pitcher of the Year, Twins Dailies, excuse me, for the second year in a row. It could be Simeon getting the team award because he had an excellent season. And this all needs to be in the context of his career to this point. He was a, a global top 100 prospect. You know, September, he was born in September of 2000. He just turned 22 a couple days ago, just turned 22 years old. A lot of, lot of hype, you know, in the Mets organization. Was very good. Traded in the Marcus Stroman deal in 2019. He's kind of floated around the Twins. The Twins wanted Marcus Stroman. And instead, the Mets got him and traded Woods Richardson to Toronto. They got Marcus Stroman. So then SWR was a Blue Jay in the Blue Jay system. And then he's traded again for someone who's very similar to Marcus Stroman in Jose Barrios. And uh, I think the same amount of team control both times on Stroman and Barrios, a year and a half. Traded again. So it hasn't been easy. It's been tumultuous for him in his minor league career. He was a Met. He was a Blue Jay. Now he's a twin. And last year was flat out rough. He only pitched 53 and a thirds, you know, at double A as a 20 year old, 591 ERA walk rate was through the roof, just 34 walks in 53 and a thirds innings, like bad, bad year that dropped him out of the top 100. And when the twins acquired him, it was like, you're buying low. They bought low on Simeon Woods Richardson. And I think they 
they liked what they saw before 2021 and rightly so because this year his ERA is cut by three runs. He's got a 277 ERA at double A and triple A. He's been even better at triple A than he was at double A strikeout rates remain in the same area. The walk rate is way down this year. He had 5.7 walks per nine last year. This year it's down to three in those two levels. And I've said it so many times he's on average six years younger than his competition at triple a and he's got a 221 era at triple a and 36 and two thirds on the season 107 and a third 115 strikeouts for uh Simeon Woods Richardson and a 277 era have a year he deserves it man he deserves it the reason I'm really excited about him is because we've heard a lot about who he is and I think twins fans are going to really like him I think we're really going to like him I think we're going to like watching him pitch you know potentially four or five pitch repertoire. Keith law has questions about whether he'll be a starter or a reliever. He needs to maintain velocity as a starter. That's something he needs to do, but big curveball, good changeup, kind of off speed centric pitcher coming up. Good off speed stuff. The fastball velocity does fluctuate. I'll be interested to see where he's at. Is he, you know, low nineties? Is he mid nineties? There'll be some adrenaline involved Sunday. I'm sure. But that's kind of the biggest question with him is, uh, is the fastball velo, but he's six, three, two, ten. 22 years old. I think room for, for more there uh, size wise, he's big, strong, right-handed, and uh, he's been through a lot already in his minor league career. And even this year, the COVID problems, he came right back and uh, was excellent coming off the COVID list. So I'm super excited about him. I think he's somebody again, twins fans are really going to like, and I'm, I'm excited about the possibility that he is a part of this rotation next year. This is a good sign. This is a good sign because he's going to go into 2023 with a start already under his belt, no matter how it goes, with a start under his belt, he's got great numbers at AAA. I'm sure he'll start in St. Paul, and then, you know, he'll be the first one up or the second one up. He'll be ready to go, and he's already going to get a feel for the majors and know what it feels like to be in a big league clubhouse, to face big league hitters, even if it's just for, for one start against the Tigers and, you know, a meaningless game in October, and early October. It's still super special, super valuable, always cool to see guys debut. I'm, I'm very excited about Simeon Woods Richardson. And this is, this is for next year. This is why I'm more hopeful. They're going to have a lot of options in the rotation. And I'm also kind of fearful. They're going to be relying on young starters again. And that's, that didn't work this year. You know, they had injuries, they had ineffectiveness. guys got hurt. Guys weren't good. A lot of them, you know, the guys they were relying on Jordan Balazovic, not good, hurt, Matt Cantorino hurt, you know, Blaine Enlow was hurt. They, they believe they, knew that coming into the season. Cole Sands wasn't very good. You know, they, they thought they were going to get more from their young starters. Josh Winder was so-so. Louis Varlin was good, but he didn't give you anything before September. And that's, you know, he already had ascended all the way through the minors. So next year, these guys again will be in the picture. It'll be Winder. It'll be Woods Richardson. It'll be Varlin. It'll be, you know, Sands hopefully in some kind of role. It'll be all these guys and the and Joe Ryan and Bailey Ober, all these young starters, these young homegrown starters that will be in the mix in 2023. And I think it's a good thing that we're going to get a look at Varland, a longer look at Winder this year. And we're going to get a look uh, at Simeon Woods Richardson, Sugarland, Texas, Simeon drafted in the second round in 2018, going to make his, uh, his major league debut on Sunday. I'm excited. I'm excited to see it. And you'll notice all these guys are right-handed. The Twins are going to be very right-handed in the rotation next year, unless they go out and get Carlos Rodon, which they should. This is another example. Like SWR coming up, making a start this year at 22 years old, dominating AAA. And, and yes, like not a huge sample. He's made seven starts, but he's been excellent. 38 strikeouts, 36 and two-thirds innings at AAA. This is another reason why the Twins need to go get a frontline starter in free agency or via trade. They need to do it because all these guys are coming up, and I'm not saying they're going to be great, and especially not saying they're going to be great in 2023. Uh, look, at what, look at what Joe Ryan. Like Joe Ryan's a top 100 prospect and a lot of excitement last year, made his debut, looked great, and we're penciling him into the rotation in Penn, rather, in 2022, and he had a good year. He had a really good year, but we saw a lot of warts. You see flaws. You know, you see flaws, especially in a rookie season. He's worked through things. He's worked through not relying so much on his fastball. All these guys are going to have to work through things. Josh Winder is working through things. You know, working through his fastball, getting destroyed, and trying to figure out how to get outs with his fastball as a starter. That's very difficult to not get outs with your fastball, not get swings and misses, not get weak contact, 
and try to last five and six innings in a game. He's working through that. You know, Louis Varlin, similar with Joe Ryan. How can I rely a little bit less on my fastball and my command? You know, my command at sometimes is spotty. How do I work around that? All these guys go through their own problems. Bailey Ober, injuries. How do I stay healthy? He hasn't stayed healthy throughout the minors into the major leagues. They all go through, you know, their own lumps. And they will not be different with Woods Richardson. It'll be the same. He'll go through his own as well. And it'll probably be the questions we have now, like fastball velocity, questions we have with Winder, you know, similar to Woods Richardson. Can he get guys out with his fastball? Can he be really reliant on off-speed stuff and get through a longer start? Those are the same questions I think we'll have for Simeon that we had for Winder, that sometimes we have for Joe Ryan, that, you know, Bailey Ober's health, that's another thing. Same questions, all these guys, they're young, they're young. And that's why it's going to be hard to feel very confident in the rotation without additions because they're relying on guys who are unproven. It doesn't mean they're bad, but that also doesn't mean they're going to be good because they've been good in the minors. I'm excited about Simeon. I'm obviously excited about Winder and what he's potentially able to do. They have exciting young starters. Like they have exciting guys who I think can be mid to back of the rotation starters. I thought Jordan Balazovic was their best chance at a frontline true ace because he's got the velocity. He's got the size. He's got the off-speed stuff. He's got the prospect pedigree. He's got the, the results. He's got the age. You know, he's got everything you're looking for. And it didn't happen this year. And he was the one guy I was looking at as he's like your best chance at developing a true number one starter. And that's so hard to do. If any of these guys, Simeon, Josh Winder, Joe Ryan, Bailey Ober, Louis Varland, Cole Sands, if any of these guys, Jordan Balazovic, Matt Cantorino, if any of them have a 10-year like Jose Barrios did with the Twins, that is an exceptional outcome. That's the reality here. If you get Jose Barrios, one Jose Barrios out of all these guys, that's a great outcome. I'm not saying that my expectations are low. That's That should be your expectations for pitching prospects. But what I do also expect is them to pump out fours and fives. Like, can you pump out back of the rotation starters? And what that allows you to do is then you can go out and get a true number one, a frontline starter. They have to do that second part. They haven't done that ever, you know, really gone out and gone after a true ace. They can do that with Carlos Rodon. He's been an ace this year and he's going to be one of the best starters on the market. They can do that now. But if you are able to develop mid rotation starters, back of the rotation starters, it gives you that luxury because you don't have to sign Dylan Bundy. You don't have to sign Chris Archer. You don't have to sign Jay Happ or Matt Shoemaker. You can fill those holes in with your young starters you've developed to be mid to back of the rotation starters. And they can always get better. You know, these guys can improve. And all of a sudden you have a frontline starter. The Astros are a really good example of this. They're young starters from Rivaldez, you know, Jose Arquiti, Christian Javier. A lot of those guys look like mid rotation starters when they first came up, mid to back of the rotation starters. And if that was the case, that's a good outcome for the Astros, but they got more out of those guys. Now, Valdez is a frontline starter. You know, Urquidy looks like a true number three. Christian Javier is very good. They have good young starters who they've pulled more out of from just being mid to back of the rotation starters. We haven't seen that from the Twins, this regime. We haven't seen it from the Twins, period. Can we get, can we get that? Jury's out. Can we get mid to back rotation starters? I think they can. I think they have multiple guys who can be threes, fours, and fives in a, in a rotation, in a competitive rotation. I think they do. Do they have 10? No. I think they have, you know, maybe three of these guys turn out to be building blocks in the rotation. Not frontline starters, but building blocks. And the frontline starter, you can go get. You can go get that guy. You can go get that guy in free agency. And if you're able to develop just one and you get one in free agency, Look at that. We got a great rotation. It's easier said than done. It's the hardest thing to do. Develop great pitching, develop superstar level talent. It's the hardest thing to do. But uh, the Twins are in a spot now where they do have a slew of young right-handed starters who've had a lot of success in the minors who should factor in for 2023 and should pitch innings, meaningful innings for the Twins in 2023. Simeon Edwards Richardson making his debut on Sunday. His name on his uh, nameplate wraps around to uh he said it it goes from love handle to love handle that's how long it is on him he said that on his back it's so long woods richardson it's extremely long on his back but uh, i'm i'm excited to see him pitch i'm excited to see what he can do thanks so much for making lockdown twins your first listen every day today and this week thanks for making 
Locked On Twins, your first listen, as always, on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. And I'll make your second listen, the Locked On MLB Podcast. MLB expert Paul Francis Sullivan brings humor, passion, and unique perspective on every team and the biggest stories around the league. Follow the number one daily league-wide podcast, Locked On MLB, on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks so much for listening. Have a great weekend. We'll chat Sunday night. Go Twins.